Welcome to Southwest Wyoming, and I'm out here fishing. You're like, what? Doesn't look like there's any water around. Over 7,000 feet in elevation, and I'm out here fishing. Well, I'm actually hunting for fossil fish. Welcome to one of the quarries near Fossil Butte National Monument, one of the commercial quarries where you can come out and split some of the shale on your own and see what see what fossil treasures you find so let's head over here and see what a couple hours of busting open rocks has got me so far and then we'll talk a little bit about the the geology in this location so here's here's all my treasures after about a about two hours i'd say of splitting open rocks and then they've got a nice tile saw so you can trim them down um, to something more manageable. Um, I think a lot of these are the same species. I'll have to do some sleuthing there and I've got a few that might need a little more prep work to get some of the rock out. Uh, and then some are full, some are partial. This guy's missing his back half. Same with this, this little fella. Um, Another one here, and then this one's, yeah, another one over here that's missing part of it. This one here is my probably my biggest intact fish, but he actually split along the vertebrae, but we were able to get it get it glued together. So, so how did these fish end up here in southwest Wyoming at 7,500 feet? Let's go take a walk over to um, the quarry wall and look at the rocks in place. So here's what the formation that the fossils are found in looks like in situ at the back of the quarry face here. And you can see that it's sedimentary, beige colored, it's, it's horizontally bedded. Um, and what makes this such a great place to look for fossils is it's also very thinly laminated. You can see how thin the layers are. And then when you can find a nice thick slab and break it open with your hammer and chisel, you can find pieces you can break open pieces that are sometimes wafer thin, like less than about an eighth of an inch or so. Uh, and then obviously thicker ones. But it's just super fun. It's like opening up pages in a book. You're just splitting open these layers of rock looking for whatever fossils uh, have been preserved. These fossils, again, are in the Green River Formation, which is an Eocene age deposit. These are from lake beds. Um, and it's mainly, this location, it's mainly a uh, calcareous shale. Um, in some places, some type people call it a marl, um, but it's sort of a calcite rich shale. And the preservation's quite good. So they operate some of this equipment here that just cuts up a little section of the rock and then they spread it out here on the pad. And then you can see some of the folks that are out here fossil hunting. A lot of times it sounds like Santa's workshop. Everyone's just uh, chipping away with their hammer and chisel and and it's addicting. It's a bit like, uh, I guess it's a bit like gambling in a way in that you, you know, you find one and then you think, oh, well, maybe I can find another one or a better one. Or uh, if you're like me, one breaks and then you're kind of bummed and hoping you can find one that's just as good. Um, but definitely a, a thing called fossil fever where you can really just get super super into this thing and people spend all day out here uh, looking for these fossils. Um, there's some folks over here that have found some nice big slabs. Uh, there's part, a couple fish there. Another one down there in that nice big slab. So they're breaking open some bigger pieces down in here. And then they'll stack a lot of these pieces up and sell them. There's a nice big full fish uh, in that one right there. Um. So I wanted to provide a little bit more of a regional context for these freshwater lakes that existed in the Eocene. So here's a paleogeographic map 
of the western U.S. that shows basically what we think the landscape looked like there about 50 million years ago. So a couple things to point out here you can see the the Rocky Mountains had just started to rise and this was part of a, a mountain building event called the Laramide Orogeny. So we have the Black Hills, uh, the Bighorn Mountains, uh, and other parts of the Rocky Mountain system already beginning to uplift along with the Uinta Mountains here in eastern Utah. And these uplifts then form lowlands or basins uh, in these in between these intervening mountain ranges we have these basins then filling with water the Eocene was actually a really warm and wet time period in Earth's history it was actually one of the warmest time periods during the Cenozoic era and so consequently in these basins uh, water accumulates running off from these highlands and forms these big freshwater lakes so we can see this small one here which is where the quarry that I'm in um, where it deposited its rocks. Uh, a larger one here in the Green River Basin, um, another one here south of the Uintas um, in the Uinta Basin, and then another one down here in southwestern Utah, which is responsible for some of the rocks we see around Bryce Canyon National Park. So if we switch to um, a little bit different view here of a little more simplified view of things. The quarry I'm at is the red square there. Uh, the green areas would be um, mountain ranges, so like the Wind River Range here, the Uinta Mountains here. Uh, this is the ridge and the small mountain range along uh, Kemmerer here in Wyoming. And then you can see these individual lakes that existed during the Eocene. So this small one here, which only existed for a few million years, right around 50 million years ago, is Fossil Lake. The big one here in the Green River Basin, and then another big one here uh, down in the Uinta Basin. And this one, Lake Uinta, was the longest lasting of these three lakes that lasted maybe uh, about maybe about 15 to 20 million years total from about 40 to 58 or so million years ago. So hopefully that helps provide a little bit of context for the fossils and the rocks we're looking at. So let's go back to the quarry. And then you can see there's there's some other layers in here as well. Um, again, I don't know much about this, but in talking to the fo the quarry operators, there's uh, thin layers of what they're calling ash and um, maybe slightly altered ash. But you can see a little bit darker layer right here, um, quite crumbly. Places where there's a little bit more iron oxidation that's occurred. Remember, this, these were big, huge freshwater lakes, and so you've got not only all the depositional processes that go in the lake, but anything that can get blown into it, including volcanic ash. The Eocene was a pretty active period of magmatism in the western U.S., and so this is definitely in a downwind location for some of that ash to, to end up. But the climate at the time was definitely much more tropical. Um, it was w definitely a lot warmer and wetter, and there was a full ecosystem that just thrived in these, uh, in these, in, in and around these lakes, where these, uh, where these rocks have been deposited. So, pretty incredible. Um, I think it's well worth the time if you're ever in southwestern Wyoming. Make sure you visit the National Monument, Fossil Butte. Uh, they have a really great exhibit with a lot of different specimens. There's crocodiles and turtles and bats, all sorts of insects. Um, but the main thing that's found here are the fish. And then there's a number of commercial quarries where you can um, pay a fee, come for an hour or part of the day or the full day and um, keep what you find. Just sit there and split open rock. But despite being out in the sun and kind of backbreaking work, it, I can attest that it's, it's really uh, quite, quite addicting and really super fun. So um, yeah, so that's a little bit about the Eocene Green River Formation down here in southwest Wyoming and one of the commercial quarries we find here. Slabs just left over so they just laid out. You can see these ones here are a little darker. Um, they're a little bit more wet and then as they kind of dry out they turn into this more like light gray to white color. So you can see all the folks tinkering away hoping to find something great but yeah, I mean, I was only here a few hours and uh, I feel pretty good about the little 
little treasures I collected. Um, so hopefully you can find time to come out, visit one of these places. And if not, we were able to visit this together. Thanks again for joining me, Geology Professor Sean Wilsey at one of the fossil quarries here in Southwest Wyoming.